Hello Flickering Myth family and welcome to our channel. My name is EJ Marino and we have a top 5 list today. We're going to be jumping into one of my favorite subjects ever. We're going to be talking about the slasher movies that came after Scream. We're going to be ranking the best slasher franchises in the post-Scream era. Number 5 Urban Legend. The 90s kid in me loves the Urban Legend franchise. It has everything I wanted. A cool looking killer, a group of some of the like most big named 90s people. I mean, Jared Leto, Rebecca Gayhart. This was everything I wanted. And I like that first film. It does what it needs to do. It's scary. It's a good mythos. I love them dealing with urban legends. That was a, a fun different angle for a slasher film. It was kind of meta like the Scream way, but it wasn't just film like meta awareness. It was just all through pop culture. That's pretty cool. Then we get to the sequel, which is Final Cut, and there's a, a film element to it. They're making a, a movie in this movie, and I love that. I think that's a good element. The rest of the movie is not good, and it is a pretty mediocre early 2000s slasher. Think of movies like Valentine and things like that. Then we get into the third movie. Did you know that there was a third Urban, uh, Urban Legends movie? Yeah, it's called Bloody Mary, and it's really bad. One of those straight-to-DVD ones. That was the evolution. We had, like, fine, uh, we had Urban Legend, big deal, theater release. Then Final Cut came out, a little bit smaller of a release. Then we go to the straight-to-DVDs. Uh, that's come of the, some of the franchises they're going to deal with that here. But I will say, I do think Urban Legend has earned its spot with a strong first entry, an okay second one, and a, an abysmal third one. Number four, I Know What You Did Last Summer. Speaking of a film that has a strong first entry, a okay second one, and a pretty bad third one, let's talk about I Know What You Did Last Summer. The coolest thing about this film, especially the first one, and I believe the second one, Kevin Williamson, who wrote the Scream movies, is returning to the slasher genre with this, but adding a different uh, level to it. There is a murder mystery aspect to Scream, but I think I Know What You Did Last Summer really ups that. It, it, it's based on a book so that there's that like mystery element where you want to turn the page, figure out who the killer is, and the film does that. It also stars Jennifer Love Hewitt, Sarah Michelle Gellar, Freddie Prince Jr., Ryan Phillippe. These are some of the big names of this industry at the time, and it was a pretty big deal when this came out. I was obsessed with I Know What You Did Last Summer. This was everything I wanted. I was a big Buffy fan, so Sarah Michelle Gellar was there like she was in Scream 2. So this was a, a world I was so ready to enter again. Then I still know what you did last summer came out. And it has one of my favorite lines ever with the Will Benson. Oh my goodness. I think it's a fun cult kind of hit where it's not a great film, but it does what it needs to do. I, it's a step down. I like Brandy though. It's okay. Meh, it's here. Then we go to the third film. I always know what you did last summer. And it is one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my entire life. There is a channel on YouTube called The Kill Count. I'm going to link it up. Oh my goodness. Check out his video about this horrible movie. Don't ever watch the movie. Just watch The Kill Count. It is truly that bad. And that's why I Know What You Did Last Summer kind of ranks low. The first two films are much stronger than the Urban Legend movies. But looking at the rest of my list, they're not as strong as some of the other ones. I really like that first one and I wish they would have kept up the momentum. And then they get to the third one, and wow, the straight-to-DVD era has ruined some of these franchises. Number three, Wrong Turn. In the post-Scream era, body counts and gore were upping like crazy. If there was a slasher film, it needed to be a bit more violent, grotesque, a little bit more extreme to get the audience in. And yeah, Wrong Turn is exactly that. That first film with Eliza Dushku is a big deal. This was a horror hit at one point. It really kind of brought back the deformed mountain people kind of subgenre that like Wes Craven started with, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, yeah, the Hills Have Eyes, which has a remake in the 2000s as well. So yeah, we were bringing back a little bit of a subgenre, but actually introducing the slasher elements to it by having that group of large hot people get killed off one by one by these crazy mountain men. And a lot of people think there is just one Wrong Turn movie. There is a whole franchise. I actually personally love Wrong Turn 2. I think it's a pretty great movie. And then there's a reboot that is really, really good. It came out uh, at the beginning of this year. And it is one of my favorite horror films of the year because it reinvented Wrong Turn in a new direction. Now, in between 1, 2, and this reboot, 
there is a gaggle of straight to DVD movies that are varying quality. Some of them feel like sleazy low budget like horror porn. Some of them feel like fun little slasher entries. I tend to ignore some of them, but I do think the first, second, and reboot are some of the strongest on this whole list. Looking at the films that came before this, I really do think Wrong Turn really got it. It's not my personal favorite. It does get a little sleazy in some of these films, okay, in most of these films, but looking at that reboot that really kind of reinvented the mountain men kind of trope, it was giving us a new layer, a new element. It is so strong. And then you look at Wrong Turn 1 and 2 and you're like, wow, it, this whole franchise has evolved now. This was the evolution I wanted. Maybe when I know what you did last summer gets its TV reboot, I will actually up it a little bit. But with this reboot of Wrong Turn, it really showed that there is new life in this franchise and I would watch more from this. Number two. Hatchet. What a lot of movies on this list are missing is an iconic killer slashing away through our teens. Most of these movies have relied on their big name stars to kind of draw in attention and not the slasher. I mean, you look at the 80s and we had Chucky, Pinhead, Freddy Krueger, Jason, Michael. We had all of these things. Then we go to Scream and we had Ghostface, iconic slashers. A lot of these are missing it. Like, I know what you did last summer. Oh yeah, the hook hand man. Wrong turn. Oh yeah, the group of deformed people. But a hatchet? Oh my god, Hatchet has introduced a new horror icon with Victor Crowley. I love this franchise. It is actually one of my low-key favorite modern horror things. It's a, It has the slasher element of watching Victor Crowley go through these people in his Louisiana setting. Then it has evolved with Danielle Harris coming into the franchise and actually really adding more weight and like depth to it. We have good actors like Tony Todd that are in these movies. We have Kane Hodder, who is one of the best horror, like stuntmen slash performers we've ever seen taking on Victor Crowley. This is a great modern franchise. When I think of the post scream slashers, Hatch is so good. It is just exactly what we needed. It's a traditional slasher in so many ways, but it's evolving it. The supernatural element, the gore, the intensity, the weird setting. I really, really think this is a strong one. If you guys have not seen Hatchet 1, Hatchet 2, or even the film like Victor Crowley, go watch them. They're pretty fun. They're very violent, very gory, so I will warn you there. But overall, I think they're really super strong. There is one franchise that ranks up a little bit higher, but a lot of people won't consider that a slasher. So if you don't, consider Hatchet as our number one then. But let's get to the real number one. And that that's not saying anything shady. I do love me some Hatchet, but Let's get to number one. Number one, Saw. First and foremost, I have to say this, Saw is a slasher franchise. We have Jigsaw, our like kind of Michael Myers, our Freddy Krueger killing off a group of people. There is a story, a mystery aspect. That's all that I need for slashers. I need a masked or like hooded figure killing a bunch of people fine. I need a little bit of a murder mystery aspect. That's the old Giallo inspirations with uh, the slasher film. So we need that here. We need high body counts. We need a serialized story. It doesn't always have to be, but those really do help the kind of slasher elements. And that's why Saul is a slasher franchise to me. Some people will label it torture porn, but that's not a full genre. There needs to be more to a film to really sink me in. And that's what this is. Saul is is a huge pop culture hit. Everyone knows about this franchise. Everyone has at least seen one Saw movie or at least is aware of the first film or one of the newer ones or hell, even Spiral, which is a kind of reboot, a reimagining of the franchise that came out this year with Chris Rock. I had a great time watching that film and that showed me that Saul still had life. There is still something here, though this has evolved a bit. I think the newer one has more of a, a cop element to the kind of counterbalance the slasher element, but I still think of a, wow, there is one killer killing off a group of people systematically. Truly, what does it take for it to be a slasher movie? Saul has that. It is one of the biggest moments in pop culture. It has a infamous killer with Jigsaw. 
I don't even like the John Kramer mentality of what he does, but there's still something addictive about that character. And then when there isn't just John Kramer, there's still a hooded figure going through and getting these people to kill themselves and or kill them because, you know, Jigsaw is still murdering people. No matter what you say, Jigsaw will never forgive you. But yeah, I definitely think this is a strong entry. When you look at post Scream, there is not another horror franchise that has impacted people as much much as Saul. This was the moment. This was the evolution of slashers. This is one of the best horror franchises of all time, especially in the modern era. Now, you may not think Saul is a slasher franchise, but think a little harder and you will see that this is the best like horror franchise that's slasher based in the post scream era. All right, everyone, that is it for my video where I break down the five best slasher franchises in the post Scream era. What did you guys think of this list? Am I missing a major franchise that you say needs to be on here? Let me know down in the comments below. Subscribe to Flickering Myth because we make videos like this every single week and give us a thumbs up if you did enjoy. All right, everyone, let's talk about slasher movies down below.